Around eight years ago, I bought this 1960s era brick house in central Utah for $65,000. Then I remodeled it inside and out and moved into it. This is my daughter's room. She helps me on projects sometimes and she'll be 20 years old this spring. I've always planned on helping her buy a cheap fixer upper house and remodeling it like I did. But home prices in our area have skyrocketed over the past few years. Even for the old fixer uppers, high interest rates and rising inflation have made it nearly impossible for first time home buyers to get into a home. So rather than crying about it, we're gonna resort to plan B, a bit of a house hack, you might say. When we remodeled the place several years ago, we built this nice little walk-in closet and a separate bathroom with this custom tile shower. The plan is to cut a doorway right here that will come out right here on the other side of the wall into what I'm currently using as a storage room. Then we'll turn this area into a small apartment with a kitchenette, laundry room, and living room. Hi everyone and welcome back. If you caught the last video, I finally wrapped up the drywall and got started on the trim by hanging this closet door in the laundry room. The next thing on the agenda is building shelves in both closets, so let's get into it. I got started by laying out the shelving in this larger closet. I figure this space will be used as a pantry as well as a place for a vacuum, broom, mop, etc. I measured and marked out the bottom shelf at 18 inches from the floor so larger items such as a 5 gallon bucket would fit underneath. Then I measured and marked the other shelves 14 inches apart for a total of 5 and used my level to finish laying it all out. And that's the plan. I think I have Benny's approval. He's been supervising from a sunny spot on the hearth, but it's hard to know. He don't have much to say unless it involves treats. Not room for both of us in here, buddy boy. After squeezing myself back out of this tiny closet, I made a materials list and took a picture this time because I'm all out of contractor's notepads since the last cleanup. And after a trip to the lumber yard, it was time to get back into making sawdust. The material I'm using to support these shelves is an MDF product called hook strip. And because these old houses aren't perfectly plumb and square as we know, I've decided to measure each one separately. Next, I used my stud finder to locate the studs behind the drywall and my six foot level to plumb up and mark the locations on the horizontal level lines.
Before cutting the first few pieces of hook strip, I opened up the window and utilized my redneck dust removal system. And for those of you wondering why there's still snow on the ground in June, I recorded this footage in April when it felt like spring would never arrive. It's been in the 90s the past few days and I've been painting. The place is looking awesome and I can't wait to show you. To fasten the hook strip to the wall, I like to use my 16 gauge brad nailer with two inch nails. That should be everything I need to get started, except I did forget one thing, to watch my head. This hook strip has a square edge that goes on top and a slightly rounded edge for the bottom. After that bump on the head, you're going to have to help me make sure I get it nailed on right side up. At that point, I decided it would be most effective time-wise to get all the hook strip cut and nailed up in both closets. On the pieces where the end is exposed, I like to cut a 45 degree bevel and sand it up. Makes for a cleaner finish in my opinion. This laundry closet is a bit tight as you know. It wasn't easy filming this part, but I managed to get you a little footage anyway. That's a wrap on the hook strip. Time to get into the shelving. I measured the back and the front and the measurements were pretty close. I'm using this 15 inch wide paint grade shelving because I'm planning on painting the insides of both closets white. I like to use my framing square and skill saw to make the initial cut, set it in place and scribe it for a better fit.
And as you can see, this back wall is a bit out of whack. My fix for that is to adjust the compass to the width of the gap, transfer a line along the back of the shelf and cut it accordingly. And it fits like a glove. A good painter can fix that. Oh wait, I'm the painter. At that point, it was just repeat the process and get the back wall put together while my supervisor hovered over me, then sat on his favorite spot on the hearth and watched. Next, I cut and installed the shelves on the side wall of the closet. I cut a 45 degree angle on the front of the shelves to open up the doorway a bit and to eliminate that sharp corner. Next, I use these two pieces of trim to make a corner support to strengthen the whole shelving setup. After installing the corner support, I added these pieces on the back in between the shelves for more support because we all know how these shelves can get overloaded. I also added a leg and some more support blocks here on the front. I think that makes for a nice storage closet in a small space. Let me know what you think. By this point, I figured you'd watched me cut plenty of hook strip and shelving. So I got these shelves cut and fitted to the walls. All that's left is to get them nailed in place. And that's a wrap on the shelves. Let's get into this door. So this door is a flat panel and the rest of the doors in the house are a six panel style. I had to cut about 18 inches off the bottom for this opening. And if I would have used a six panel, the cut would have run right through the profile and looked pretty trashy. Also, this is the shiplap wall. I thought the flat panel on this wall would give it a nice look. For the doorway coming into the living room area from the entry, I'm not going to put any kind of a door on there for the time being. The main reason is to keep it as open as I can so the heating and cooling system can circulate throughout. I'm going to use these door jam pieces to box in the opening and then case it in later. <laughs> 